are compost piles for uh, mostly just leaves and, and we use cow dung and water and air. But uh, it's, uh, what you call it, it's a, 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 the type of composting where you don't need to turn the oh, compost. That's good. It's not the best method, maybe, but for us it's the best for here, where right. it doesn't require too much work for the staff. And that's, I think that's the important part, uh, what we're trying to show uh, people on the island, especially large hotels, that it really is simple, you know, and it doesn't require that you have to hire extra staff to do it. So we do it once a week, which is in, like today in the afternoon, the staff will come and do this. Every day they will rake the, uh, the, gra the ground and bring the leaves to one pile here. And then once a week uh, in the afternoon, then they will start layering it into compost pile between leaves and manure, you know, into layers and water it. So okay, so yeah. let's start. Start from the beginning of the process. Let's say we don't have anything here yet. We don't have what anything do they here. Do first? What we do is uh, in this process of composting without having to turn, we would make a pile that is no more than two and a half meter wide. Of any kind of leaves? Any, any kind, kind of, of leaves. Any okay. kind of leaves or cutting. But things like twigs and uh, bamboo, they will not compost. The fiber is Okay. strong but we do not ask the staff to take it off if it's in there it's in there right it doesn't matter it also helps yeah. the aeration yep. exactly it helps to make holes and stuff for the air to, to be in the pile so we would make the width no longer than two meter and fifty and then as long as you like yeah. it can be okay. only yeah, two meter it can be five it can be six it doesn't matter okay. it depends on the space you have then we would layer the first layer with the leaves for about, I would say, I would do it for about 20 centimeter. High, okay. Yep, high. Don't compact it in. We just lay it in the yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. Then we put a layer of manure, okay. yep, of cow dung, and then we water it. Then we make the new layer, same thing again. So the cow dung? Yep. How it's much about do how about. So. In theory, the real theory to get a really good compost, you would use three parts uh, carbon, leaves. the leaves, three parts of that, and one part cow dung. Okay. But because we are not serious, we just, we're not serious we about it. Of, yeah. We just sort of uh, uh, put the leaves on and then just sprinkle cow dung so that it covers the layer. Okay. Yeah. Only what we do, our policy is that don't make it so difficult yeah, that the staff do not enjoy. Science right. yeah. It doesn't need to be that scientific no exactly. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not selling it. It's not a business, yeah. right. So you don't I'm, need to be the yeah. most profitable. So yeah. if you get good results for not too much work, it's good. Yeah, right. the idea is to show that, hey, it's not difficult and you don't really go wrong. If you put too much cow dung on, that's all right. It's just you know, you have the to. Next time yeah. you delete. If you put it too little, it just composts a bit slower. It doesn't matter. What's right. the hurry? You're on an right. island. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, okay, so then you just do layers And then we just keep layering. And then compost, and then leaves. Uh, 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 leaves for 20 centimeter, cow dung, water it. Leaves, cow dung, water into layers and layers until it gets to a height where you, you know, you're, you're happy with it. Okay. Right. And, and, in a week it will already come down yeah so you can add more if I don't have space and I'm in no hurry I'll just keep adding it to the same pile mm. okay and the, okay. to keep it nice and moist if you don't have time which my staff sometimes don't water it for weeks what will happen is that it just composts slower okay with with not enough moisture it just stop com composting okay. so but to it doesn't me, go bad or anything, it doesn't go so bad. just the speed. It's just the speed. If you do it correctly, meaning you water it from the outside, like you water your plant yeah. uh, once a day. Yeah. If it rains, you don't have to. Right. Yeah. And then every tenth day, you come with a stick and poke some holes and water inside, okay. into there. Because the process of composting does use up moisture. 
so the inside will get dry. Uh -huh. So what you need to do every 10 days, poke holes and water the inside. And that's it. And if you so do this, you don't have to turn. You don't have to turn. And then it, about 60 days, your compost will be finished. Wow. Yeah, that's days. it, 60 days. Uh, what will happen is you will find that you get, you in get the, the stuff pile, from under. Yep, yeah. you just take the leaves from the top layer out and the inside will already be lovely and, and, and uh, uh, what you call it, uh, compost already. I'll show you in here uh, what is your type. What we do is after the pile, you should actually leave it to dry a little bit. Uh -huh. Once it's dry in the sun or so, all of this will crumble okay. into compost. So oh, this the bigger is, pieces will, yep, crumble, will up. crumble up. Yeah. But what I do here, because we have twigs and a lot of things, what I do is I would get the finished compost, put it through my sieving machine. Okay. <laughs> I have a okay. lot. And then it would turn into a lovely... I put it through the sieve. Yeah. And that's all from, from that compost? Yeah. There were leaves and... That was uh, leaves thing. and just cow dung. Just like 50 days ago. Yeah. Amazing, and yeah. if you don't, I mean, if you're not serious about it, then you can just use it as is, you, you know, with all the big bits yeah. and pieces, right. it's right. just carbon. The best is to dry it in, you know, in the shade, actually. Ah, carbon. okay. But if you don't, dry it in the sun. Yeah. Yes. Well. The thing is, don't be so serious right. about it. Right, that's it. Yeah. It's the same way as doing the big pile. Right. But we do it in a contain. ring like this, in contain. It means that... It's um it's easier for you can do it you know if you have small space next to your house and mm -hmm. uh, it's it looks a bit cleaner it looks uh, a resort on here called Moonlight Bay have taken this because they're on a hillside and it was they had so much trouble from the staff bringing in all the raking the leaves bringing it down to one area and to the staff in each area we just bring it just to that area and keep doing it so that it. Yeah. Earthworm. This is a vermi ah. uh, okay, compost. Yeah. So I actually started with earthworm with the recommendations from an Australian friend. And I do it in buckets here. My worms aren't very big, but there are a lot of them. Actually, I don't use leaves for the earthworm. I okay. use cow dung, cardboards any egg cartons that are made from you know recycled right, paper and stuff to get rid of paper and fruits and vegetables that are left from the bar or yeah, yeah. That's plenty. it's a lot and it's quite simple so i mean you know they what i do is literally just soak cow dung in in water to get rid of uh, to get it nice and moist and get rid of some of the acid and then put it in the bucket mm -hmm. and then put in the worm and then put in the vegetables cardboard all soaked up you know soft because they don't have teeth they like things yeah, like yeah, yeah. and then just cover it up with cow dung again and leave them to it every two or three days depending on the weather I'll come and water them give them moisture and then if they do their job right in a month this is already ready mm -hmm. so what I'm waiting for is to stop watering it for maybe a week so It'll this become some. nice and loose and dry then then put it through the sieving machine and what it does it will separate the earthworm oh, from the compost and, and then it doesn't I, hurt the no worm. it doesn't hurt the worm and then they get back to work again yeah. I just make them a new bed <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly that's it but in theory uh, you don't have to do it in buckets like this but because I'm Again, my staff, I don't have a staff specifically to look after them. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it in this so that if they have, you know, a couple of hours here and there, they come and do it. Right. And it's easier for them to just pick up one yeah. or two buckets uh, to do. Buckets yeah. yeah. And uh, so always, uh, I would say, try and find the easiest method yeah. for you to manage. And I think uh, for us, it, it does... Sometimes, really, literally in the high season when we are so busy, 
we don't have time to separate the worm from the compost, we just keep adding food and water. Yeah. And maybe in six months, when it gets to less gas like this time of the year, then we have time to come back. Yeah. People ask me, oh, why are your worms so small? Because these are African night crawlers. They are supposed to be quite big. Uh -huh. But I said, it's like human. If I don't come and, and, and separate them from the compost, they just reproduce in here and there's not enough space like, for right. them to grow. So they obviously adapt to getting smaller yeah. to be able to stay all together. Yeah. And which is okay by me yeah. as long as they eat and make compost. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I think people fear what, what you were saying is that they are very much stuck to the theory that it must be done that way. We have to do it right. And it must be done that way right. in a certain it's way. And I think starting something. Yeah. It and might it, not do right. You just have to 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 adapt uh, to. I mean, what as I said, you know, now you can ask anyone. So I keep asking people, and eventually you will find someone who did have the same problem as you, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they sort it somehow by some way, some you know. Easy. Right. Yeah, and you sort of ah, you sort of uh, 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 let's say a pot to plant like that. Start with a handful. If you don't see much improvement, try another handful, you know. And the thing with this is, unlike chemical, you can put as much in as you like, and it doesn't kill your plant, and it doesn't kill you. Right. right. So I think that yeah. that's the thing. Oh, thank you. So I, I would say that, you know, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a fun and, and, and joy of doing all of this. And to be able to see it from 12 buckets or 6 buckets, I don't know, hundreds. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and some vegetables and all kind of cardboards. Okay. Uh, soak in water, put it in about, almost fill up, about four, four fifths of a bucket, everything filled in. It would take about 30 days okay. for the uh, worm to eat it all up yeah. and it to be turned into uh, compost. Okay, so, so as I said, there are many methods, but this one works for me. Is I would drill holes. Okay. In this, all of these will have holes okay. in the bucket. Earthworm, they like moisture, but they don't like flooding. They don't. Right. Otherwise, they drown. Yeah. So they like moisture. So I make holes. So in any there. excess will go out. Excess yeah. water will go out. Then I would add a cow dung that has been soaked in water. Okay. For about two-thirds of the bucket okay then I would put in very in the real put 200 grams <laughs> of earthworm in but for me that's a not much yeah <laughs> grams I just put a handful in right and then with any leftover vegetables fruits that you have in your kitchen you know put it in so would that include like uh, the husks of passion fruit or something you no. can put anything in but again, earthworm don't have teeth, so anything with a lot of fiber, they can't really yeah. digest. Okay. But then they may bore in there, they may little breathe by in little, there, yeah. and As it, it will break down. Yes. Yep. Okay. So I would use all kind of, you know, mango Please. peels, uh, uh, oranges, uh, anything in there. They don't like so much acid, so I don't really put in pineapple. Okay. And things. okay. So I would put that in there, also about a handful, yeah, and then... If I have cardboard, no, I would also soak that in water and put some in because okay. they really do love the holes in the car uh, corrugated uh -huh. cardboard. Uh -huh. They love it. They you love to inside. be inside and, and <laughs> all of that. And some people said, oh, uh, can I use cardboard with, you know, when they do color printing and plastic film? A lot of people said, no, you can't. Blah, blah. I do. I just read <laughs> about put it in and what will happen is amazing. In a month, the earthworm will eat all the what they can eat, and they leave a thin film of plastic. Oh really? Just separate, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, again. Smart. I, I'm not serious about it. I just soak it, <laughs> put it in as well, and then cover with cow dung again okay. to about this much in okay. the bucket. Yeah. Then just leave it on the shelf, and then uh, come and check every two or three days if you feel that. It's getting too dry, meaning like uh, if you touch the top uh -huh. or you see it cracking and dry, just water it. 
Okay. Yeah. If you water too much, again, uh -huh. it will right. come out. Yeah. If you don't water enough, in a couple of days you see that it's dry again. You just need to water again. And if you are not lazy, like me, I'm a bit lazy. When you're watering, you can actually use the water that filter through because yeah. it's fill, filled with nutrients right. as well. And to we, go we and water it, your plant yeah. spring. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's right. You can use that as well. Add a bit more water, maybe half and half, and then just go and, and water And then use that water garden. to water your plant. Yeah, because it's that's filled with nutrients that has come through, drain through. Then what I do, so that I would do that for about 20 days. I just keep checking if there's enough water. You don't need to add. If you have fruits and vegetables and you want to keep adding, you can. What okay. you do is, again, what you do, instead of adding a whole heap, you just have to remember you start with only a handful of earthworm. So if I want to add fruits or vegetables that I don't want anymore, the cutting, I make a hole like that, mm -hmm. put a handful in one area, then cover it up. Okay. Maybe in a couple of days I have more. I will make another hole somewhere else in another area so that they, what you'll find is the earthworm will come forward your food once it's finished. If you put in a new one, they migrate. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. They keep yeah. moving. Right. And then on about the 20th day, in, if you do it correctly by schedule, <laughs> about the 20th day, you will already have a really good compost on the top layer because the earthworm, they eat and then they come and pull up top. Okay. So the, 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 the pool will be all up here. That's a good compost. You can already Take scrape some off to go and use straight in your garden. And then what you do is then you come and turn the whole thing like that to add more air. Right. Because as it, it composts, it gets denser. Yeah. So what you do, you add more right. air. Yeah. And also, you get the earthworm to come and meet new friends. And they <laughs> breathe. <laughs> <laughs> So like you know, maybe they, they live in this corner and they yeah, haven't found yeah. a girl they like, you know, so yeah. what you do is you turn it all around so that they meet new friends, you yeah. know, uh -huh. and then you then do, you get more. yep, and then you do the same thing, just check if it's moist for another 10 days and then all, all of this would be already ready. If you think it's ready, then just stop watering it so that it's nice and dry because when it's wet, like it's very hard to yeah. separate yeah. the earthworm from, from, from the compost. So, you know, I would say 30 to 35 days, that's it. It's like, and all of this is filled with little, little earthworms. Okay. So the only the first, when you start, you use the cow dung. And then after yep. that, it's just the vegetables and yep, the, you and can the keep cardboard. Adding. Yeah. You'll find and that then if only you if you start again, you would put more cow yep. dung. So when you start, once it's all separate, you come with an empty bucket again. What you'll find is that if you, like me, start with six, the next turn you may get eight buckets. The next turn you may get 12 buckets. Mm -hmm. Just keep multiplying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, so you see it that it's, it's like once you separate it, it's just so much earthworm in there. Big, small, all sizes. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. We've been able to reduce the garbage that's going to the uh, like, garbage yeah. dump by, I would say, two thirds. Wow. Two thirds, you know. And that's because once you separate, in our kitchen, we separate the food waste yeah. out of all the other rubbish. Whereas before, when you throw, nobody wants to sort it once it's dirty. Yeah. But once you separate the food waste the from, from the other stuff. And you know, people ask them, when do you add the food waste? I would say that if you have a pile like outside there, just add it where you like. Because the leaves, when it's covered, you don't get smell at all. There's no smell. So yeah. And you don't get rats or things? No. Because okay. when it's composting, it's hot. Mm. I mean, you know, it's really, really hot in there. Animals are attracted mostly, first of all, by smell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Secondly, uh, by the by the um, a liquid that uh, it soaks out from from all the food. But when you do it in this method on the ground like this, if you have excess liquid, it will mm -hmm. get soaked into the ground. That's number one. Number two, by using leaves, it is a biofilter. It, I tested it with a friend's resort where we do it in a small scale. I'll show you the other type that we do. And I said, 
uh, get all the smelliest stuff you have. So she got uh, fish guts, uh, prawn heads and tails, shells, you know, all the seafood. That has been used in the kitchen the night before and kept in the bin. And wow, obviously with the stinky, heat, it yeah. starts to work. So what happened was, we once we put it in uh, the pile, suddenly flies from everywhere. Right. Flies from everywhere. It's like oh, hundreds came. So And she was like, ah! She said, <laughs> okay, don't worry, don't worry, wait. We do this by the method. Once we put, suddenly we put the leaves on top. Yeah. The smell is covered. It's gone. And put the cow down on top, water it. And I literally asked, come and sniff. You know, come and sniff. And all the flies that some suddenly were there, that, that were there are gone. And she was quite, I mean, you, a lot of people don't believe it until you actually right. do yeah. it. You know, you uh -huh. do it. And, uh, and also the food waste that we use, you strain the water out because like, like Thai food, we have a lot of soup, a lot of liquid. Yeah. So what you do is I just put um, a strainer, a big strainer on the, in the kitchen sink and from the uh, restaurant just to pour everything in. Then once you're done, strain the food, put it in the bucket and the rest go to the treatment, you know, uh, yeah. uh, water treatment. And uh, it's not as complicated. As, as people think. I think the problem is that once uh, before they start anything, they start questioning. That's yeah. the problem. What will happen with this? What will happen? What, what, what? And I, and I would say, do it. And then, and then I think that the solution is, is there. And, uh, or again, ask other people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah, so it's the method of which. No, we use. Uh, Tobacco, okay. Oh. Tobacco vinegar, and tobacco vinegar. You make yep. a vinegar out of tobacco? No, no. Or you we make tobacco, uh, tobacco in, into with the vinegar. vinegar and a little bit <laughs> of rice, uh, of rice wine. You know, that the cheap alcohol. Yeah. Yep. And and leave it overnight. Okay. And then the next day we just strain, and then just use uh, uh, the that to add with one to four part water and just spray to get rid of uh, a lot of the insects okay, yeah. okay. so it, it kind of work and but you have to do it more often right then obviously if you use chemical you do it a lot yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. but it doesn't yeah. pollute your soil no it doesn't so. and it's, it's it actually adds to the washing machine and then some friends who want to do compost so and this like the yeah this is a compost that um, was too large right and so we come to the mulching machine and in here you have like some snail shells some um, you know all bits and bobs in there which is fine as well right. so we don't really uh, we're not really serious technical know-how uh, if this one grow well this one doesn't grow well this, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, the compost that I use is from from what I have here, I don't bring other yes. other things to add to it. Right. right. You know, I, I, I've been reading that to get a really good compost, you may need to bring that to add to it. But I, said, I have what I have. Yeah. And I, I, I grow good. what is, is uh, go with this compost yes. and, and the soil here. Yeah, so this, I mean, it just won't stop growing and we can't eat it fast enough. And this <laughs> is only using a little bit of seed. Uh -huh. uh, just to see if it will grow well in, in this. And what yeah. we find is a leafy, leafy uh, vegetables grow better with the compost we make here. Okay. I think it's probably high okay. in nitrogen because we make it from all the leaves in the store. Right. Uh, so in here, this morning glory. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. you really you nice those stuff. leaves like vegetables? Yeah, really good stir fry. So we do it like this, mm -hmm. half of this. What we do is we don't pull it by the roots either. Right. We we'll cut it and yes. then we we'll get about a two to three rounds. Wow. Okay. And then the staff will take them. People like me who, who sort of, ah, I don't know, let's start or not. But once you start, you then sort of see, you, you sort of get annoyed by the other rubbish or trash around you. And it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, you see more from, from, I think before, I may walk past things, not noticing. And by knowing how simple it is, 
and how simple it is to cut back on, 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 on the plastic and stuff that we use. Now, like myself, you know, now by the kitchen I would have a little bin for, for food waste and then a little one to separate, a little one by household. And then I, I now from a trash bag a day, it may be a week before I fill up the trash bag. I think it's that they, they, they are one of the school that has taken this on board quite well. A hotel, two hotels, three, one, two, three, three hotels have taken it up seriously. Uh, meaning, you know, allocate staff, space, everything to do it. And uh, one hotel out of the three has the space to start growing things. Okay. So they are, are starting a, a small patch as well. And then uh, we have a, 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 a partnership in Nantanoi. I think the most difficult part is taking that first step to do yeah. something, anything, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, it's the There's one always that, that fear of failure. I'm really now an advocate for for, for composting, small scale, big scale, I don't care, and growing it yourself because it's amazing how just a packet of seeds, when if you use it all, you can't finish it. You can't, once it's grown, you have to give it away. You have to really give it to neighbors and things, which I think is fun. Yeah. So on, on the island here, what we've been doing is uh, now we have a few people who are doing composting seriously and are growing and we are swapping food for fun, mm. oh, you know, nice. just, just for fun. Yeah. And in a, we, we would show off, you know, that right. guy grow corn and his corn is like this big, wow. you know, and, and I would grow this and I would show that mine is this big or this green or the abundance and then we trade, you know, hey, bring your corn, I'll give you my kale kind of thing. It's just for, for little fun things.